Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're going to get started here in like 30 seconds. Let some more people come into our session. Okay, so welcome to our NEA Foundation Global Learning Fellows and Alumni presentation. We're going to be presenting about global connections in the classroom. So I'm going to go over the agenda and then we're going to go on to introductions. So here is what we'll be doing. So um, welcome all. Um, before we begin, could you please put um, ES if you're elementary, MS middle school, or HS before your name. So we can split you into the correct breakout rooms. And um, so that means rename yourself with either ES for elementary, MS for middle school, or HS for high school. And um, if you're not sure how to do that, just go onto your, um, your picture and then um, there's th three dots on the right side. Click on those dots and click rename. We're gonna go on to um, meet the panel after that. Then we're gonna learn about what global learning is and what the NEA Foundation does. After that, global connections defined. Then we're going to get to hear from our presenters about global connections in their classroom. And they come from different grade levels, different states, and also different schools. Then we're going to go on to the breakout sessions. So you can start thinking about ideas, um, what you want to share, and also what you learned. And then we're going to do share out and upcoming webinars as well. So for those coming in, um, rename yourself for ES for elementary school, MS for middle school, or HS uh, for high school, and put that before your name. And this is the agenda. And I see more people are coming in. <laughs> 
So this is the agenda for today. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the Global Learning Fellows. Hi everyone, I'm excited to be here with you all tonight. My name is Makisha. Um, most people just call me Keisha. I'm a K-5 instructional technology specialist in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm super excited to be here with you all tonight. So hi all, my name is Jennifer Macias Morris. I'm a first grade Spanish immersion teacher in Spokane, Washington. I teach at the Libby Center and um, I was a Global Learning Fellow in 2019. All right, welcome everybody. So glad you're here. I'm Andy Webb. I'm a K2 instructional coach and teacher from Wilmington, North Carolina, and I am a current NEA Global Fellow. Hello, everybody. I'm Don Jenkins. I teach at North Whidbey Middle School, and I teach uh, virtually online part-time uh, at a high school too. And I'm 7 through 12 social studies, and I am GLF uh, 2020, and I put a couple dots there because uh, we've been extended out a couple times, but uh, grateful to be going to Peru next summer. Welcome, everyone. My name is Kara Kassler, and I am from Columbus, Ohio. I teach German and English language learners. And although it says Potassal, Ohio, it's Columbus is the easiest big city that we're near. And I am from the Global Learning Fellowship class of 2018, South Africa. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Gleason. I'm from Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Uh, I teach instrumental music in a tent right now, because, you know, look, it's safer. And uh, <laughs> from the 2018 Global uh, Learning Fellowship that went to South Africa. Hi, everybody. I am Sandra Mikelski. I teach at Davisville Middle School. I'm located in North Kingstown, Rhode Island. I teach seventh grade geography, and I went to South Africa in 2019. Hello, everyone. Well, my name is Rufo de Leon, and um, I teach at the Sarizal University in Manila, Philippines. I am a fellow of the International Leaders in Education program. That's a program sponsored by the U.S. Department of State. And in 2015, um, I had the opportunity to work with uh, Sandra Mikelski under the Teachers for, for Global Classrooms program. Thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this exciting night. My name is Terry Anderson, and I'm a special educator at uh, Waitley Elementary School in Western Massachusetts. And I'm a Global Learning Fellow from 2018. We went to South Africa and it was the greatest thing ever. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Mary Rikiki. I am a uh, teacher at Independence Middle School in Jupiter, Florida. I teach Holocaust and Genocide Studies and World Geography electives. I am a global um, fellow for 2020, which is set and slated to be uh, Peru. Awesome. Thank you all for introducing yourselves. Now we're going to have um, one of our NEA Foundation um, representatives talk about what Global Learning Fellows is and what the NEA Foundation does with Global Learning Fellows. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Schneider, and I'm the Chief Officer for Strategic Initiatives at the NEA Foundation. Um, we are thrilled to be with you today with former Global Learning Fellows and with others who are interested in global competence. Um, the NEA Foundation is dedicated to promoting the best in public education, and we do that in several ways, one of which you're seeing um, manifest tonight is the investment in individual educators, leadership, and, um, and, their, and, and building their skills uh, to, advance, um, to advance their students' performance. Um, we also work with a number of organizations around education equity and excellence in partnership um, with them, and we work to ensure that educators' voice is heard in policy. The Global Learning Fellows Program is a year-long cohort-based learning opportunity for educators, um, elementary, 
middle and high um, to, uh, to refine their craft and to think about the importance of building global competence. In this increasingly diverse and interdependent world, this program is of um, more and more significance, it seems, as every year goes by. And we are really grateful for the continued investment of time and energy of the alumni who stay um, connected and continue to learn together. So we are really pleased for them um, to be here to share some of their learning with a broader audience and look forward to engaging with all of you. Thank you. Jennifer, I'm also gonna mention one other quick thing I'm gonna put into the chat. Um, we have a new grant opportunity that we are announcing, that we have announced today, um, Envision Equity Grants. Um, this along with two other grant programs that the foundation offers, student success grants and learning and leadership grants um, are available to all educators. And we would really appreciate and welcome you all sharing this with your network, sharing it out on social media and taking a close look at it in case it's something you're interested in applying for. Awesome, Elizabeth. Thanks for informing us about um, the Glo Global Learning Fellows and also this awesome new grant that you're putting in. Um, I think it's really awesome to see the different initiatives coming in from the NEA Foundation. We're gonna go on to Global Connections Defined by Makisha. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Elizabeth. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you so much. I'm so excited for tonight, and I'm excited to hear these amazing educators talk about global connections in their classroom. And um, this slide is basically to remind you that as you think about global connections in your classroom, think of it as an amazing opportunity for you all to build global confidence. So global competence, um, this is one definition according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It is the capacity to examine local, global, and intercultural issues, to understand and appreciate the perspectives and worldview of others, to engage in open, appropriate, and effective interactions with people from different cultures, and to act with collective well-being and sustainable development. I felt like that was such a mouthful. All right, so um, also on this slide is a graphic of the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. These are a great, great way to connect your classrooms as well and build that global confidence. And I think we're ready to go ahead and get started with our first presenter. Yeah, so our first presenter is Chris Gleason. I'm gonna, he wants to do his own sharing the screen, so let's do this. All right, hey everybody. So probably no, in no other time in history have we been so connected, I mean, by a worldwide pandemic, right? And so finding ways to reach out um, to students, not just throughout the United States, but across the world has been something that has been really moving to my students. Um, they felt isolated. I don't know about you, but my kids felt isolated in their homes and so on. And this was a way for them to reach out. Now, before the pandemic hit, we had, um, due to the Global Learning Fellowship and so on, really inspired me to reach out and do a lot more. And so I'm gonna share with you just things that we've done in the, in the recent past. Um, you can see that in 2019, we uh, reached out to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and what was cool about this project is that the kids really took ownership in it. So I'm going to show you a quick video, the one on the right here. These are two of the students that kind of led kid, the kids through our own school. 7B Literacy Room. We learn about ecosystems. And this is like a quiet space in here. You can learn about different animals. I'm Verhano and my camera girl is Titai. Welcome to our 7th grade campus tour. So as I said, said before, we're a college prep school and we also offer a lot of activities such as sports. That one room in the distance is the school store. That's where you buy. Okay, now you could see the topography of Wisconsin in winter. <laughs> And then my students looking at these kids, you know, in Ethiopia and just the connections, they're like, dude, they've got green plants and, you know, and other things. So very surface level, 
um, at first, but what was cool is the back and forth continued for a couple months and it got deeper and richer and the conversation centered around those standards where we were talking about what's water quality like and, and not just, you know, beyond music. Be music was our entry point, but then it was going deeper than that. Now, this past year, we, we actually looked at two places at one time, um, Perth, Australia, and then Johannesburg, South Africa. And in both instances, it was really fun and the kids... Uh, they really took ownership again, and, and uh, they enjoyed hearing from classmates across the world. Here's uh, Perth, Australia. G'day! Hi, our names are Lily and Kyrie. And we, we both, both play, play the flute. flute. In band, we have been learning and performing a soundscape. In this performance, we imitate the sounds of the Australian bush, including leaf crunching, rain, frogs, birds, cricket, and wind without instruments. Leaf crunching is made by violins and violas pushing and scraping their bows against the back of the instruments. The rain is made with... Okay, and cute. <laughs> right but here's the thing the kids just you know with the accent right but they were leaning into their screens and they were riveted to, to listening to this and finding out more and then by the time they were done with that video they came back with even more questions and so on and then the the last one that we've done probably the most recently here is uh, Johannesburg South Africa and this is what G'day! nope not the wrong one that button <laughs> My name is Bakita Wanuru and I play piano as an instrument. Um, my favorite thing about music is that I can freely express myself in this class and not get judged for what I like and what I don't like. And the skills that I learn from this class are very necessary for, for going into a lifestyle or a career in music later on in life. Yeah, okay, very articulate too. So it was, I mean, it, it was joyous because the kids found three really important things, autonomy, they understood mastery and then purpose. They understood the relevance of doing this, but they also had, I, I empowered them to say, okay, what do you want to find out? What do you want to know about? And then fed them some of these standards. And so they were feeding off of that. And then the connection made, boy, they just loved it. So it's it was a, it's been a great experience. It's something that will continue. Um, the thing that we're really excited about is this next year, we're going to commission a composer to write a piece honoring Nelson Mandela's life and then connect kids from South Africa actually doing the vocal and the singing along with the concert band here, all simultaneous through technology and so on. So that's where we're headed next. That's my three minutes. I'm out. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Chris. And I hope um, all those music teachers are in, in our, um, and all the teachers have got some cool ideas from that. So we're going to move on to Andy. And she's going to talk about how she connects um, her classroom. Thank you, Jennifer. I hope you all can give me some grace and understanding Jennifer is going to help me with the screen as I'm having tech issues this evening. So thank you for understanding. Uh, if the first topic that I wanted to talk about and resource is Skype a scientist. So if you don't mind clicking on that link, please. Thank you. So if you are interested in connecting your students doesn't matter if it's elementary, middle, or high school, this is a great resource because you can connect your students with scientists across the world. There's a huge database of scientists and you can choose who you want to participate with, maybe, oh, excuse me, maybe um, choose a subject, what have you, and do whatever you choose that would benefit your students um, with Skype a scientist around the world. So that's one great resource, highly recommend. So thank you for that, Jennifer. The next resource is twofold and it's the National Geographic Explore Classroom. So if you can click on that link. Yes. Hey, Garcia, can you read this? So one reason it's twofold is because the Explore classroom can allow you to connect your students with explorers around the world and they will actually have live interaction where the children can ask questions and dialogue with real everyday scientists so that your kids can see a scientist is not always this man in a lab coat working in some sterile environment 
scientists can be working all around the world doing many different things. And it really helps your children understand that they can explore the world just like all of these different people that are conducting science research around the world. And then it's twofold because another great resource for global connections is the National Geographic Educator Certification Process. So you can go through that and become a National Geographic Certified Educator yourself. And there are teachers around the world who are also certified. And there's a community that is, many people are very involved and share lots of different resources and it's all free. So you can't beat that. So there's the Skype the Sciences Explorer Classroom and the National geographic educator certification and then my final resource to share with you is one that i it's a labor of love i spent a long time uh, compiling all these resources if you will jennifer click on that link please and scroll down some it's a blog but it's housed um, my spreadsheet is housed there if you can keep on going down and this is a what I consider a treasure trove of resources. There are over 200 grant and fellowship links and deadline information, synopsis of what the grant or the fellowship is. Uh, so I spent some of them I have participated in, others I've heard from different people and they highly recommend them. Um, many of them are at no cost. Um, you go through an application process, some are reduce costs and then there are some that may require pay but those are much less than the ones that are either subsidized or free so please peruse those resources and see what you may be interested in because through many of these different experiences you can connect your students with people around the globe but you can also travel yourself to different places just like we do with the global learning fellowship and you can connect with educators around the globe in person and hopefully build those connections that will last long after the program. So you can continue to communicate with the educators and connect your students as well. So three resources I highly recommend, free, enjoy, and let me know if you have any questions, happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. I'll definitely be looking at that Excel sheet. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, it should be on there. <laughs> no, no, I know yeah, it was on there, yes. No, 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 Elizabeth said I need to add uh, the Global Learning Fellowship. It should be on there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so next up, we have Terry. Andy, that was an amazing list. I'm going to be delving into that myself. <laughs> thank, thank you. Definitely a labor of love. Thank oh, you. And thank you for sharing it. That was a lot of work. I'm really excited to talk to you all about um, these three ideas. And the first one is Empatico, which some of you have heard about, but Empatico is just an incredible resource for us. Um, usually for elementary, the right now they're kind of in the uh, grade one to six ballpark, but they've been expanding. So you have to just stay tuned. Uh, we've been doing it at our school for three years. Um, and we started out with international connections, and that's what you usually think of with Empatico. And in this first picture, you see the teacher from Nigeria, um, and he and I became friends, you know, from just contacting each other and making the arrangements for what time and so forth. Um, and these are our students over here. We're from a very small school in Western Massachusetts, pretty rural. So having a chance to meet people that are different um, from our kids is an incredible opportunity for them and just mind broadening and so important for our kids that are gonna live in a global world. So, um, but one of the challenges, it's worth it, but one of the challenges of working with an international school is the time difference. So we had to have our kids come in early before school um, to, to match up with their time. But then last year we did an impact, well, we did a lot of them, but one of them was with a class in Virginia. So from Massachusetts, it was um, pretty easy. And it was, they were so different than our students that it was really valuable. When we first were matched with them, it was a little bit of a disappointment. Oh, it's Virginia, you know? <laughs> we thought we might get Barcelona or something, but it really worked out so well. They, the kids were from a whole different walk of life and our kids learned a lot from them. Now this year, 
uh, Empatico has come up with a new program and it's called Empathy Across the US. And so they, it's a pilot program right now, but I'm sure that it'll be continuing next year. And what they've done is they have taken your school demographic and partnered you with a class in the United States that's just very different from you racially or culturally. And so once again, it has given our um, students a really great opportunity. And I've been leading that um, district-wide this year. And we have about 10 teachers that were brave to sign up because this year, as you know, as teachers, was it was a really hard thing to put your hand up and volunteer for something else. So I'm really proud of the momentum that we've made in our district. And I strongly urge you to check that out. There's the link there. It's free. They have all the lesson plans. You get, uh, you get on the dashboard. It has all the plans. It has cues for questions, reflections. Everything is already done. And the people that run the program are so creative, thoughtful, uh, and intelligent. They just, um, it's really an amazing program. I highly endorse it. The second one, Asante Sana for Education, is a nonprofit foundation in Tanzania to promote education in Tanzania. And before Empatico was ever uh, invented for us, uh, my school has been connecting with Asante Sana for Education, which means thank you very much. Um, and so we've had, we had old fashioned Skype calls um, for the last eight years with their students, sometimes with the preschool and other times with the high school. Um, and that has been really a wonderful opening, eye-opening for our kids. And now we do an annual fundraiser for this program and we're, we're pretty tightly connected. And that third picture that you see that has our Waitley banner, oh, in the first one, there's a Waitley banner too. I had the opportunity to go there in 2017. And I don't know if Joe Underwood is on this call, but he's a 2018 Global Fellow and he got to do the same experience the following year. And it was just amazing to me to see in these different schools, they would have our Waitley banner hanging and <laughs> that we had all signed. It was just incredible. Um, and then the last thing I have here, it is a little bit of a homegrown thing, but um, I have invited a lot of different people to come into the school and speak. Obviously not this year, we've done that, but by Zoom. Um, and I um, am connected with an independent school in the area, high school, and they have many international students. So I've been bringing in those students yearly um, and they've come in to speak to the classes. This girl's from Afghanistan. And so it's just brought a lot of information and um, humanity and connection to our, to our school, our small little school. <laughs> so I highly recommend it. I have my email up there if anybody wants to be in touch and get any more information about any of this. Thank you so much. Terry, we have one quick question from Laura. She asks, do they match you or can you choose? Is it a year long program or just a one time connection with Empatico? Uh, well, it's not, it's really as long as you want it to be. It could be a year long, it could be several years long. And uh, they match you, but if it's not something to your liking, you just don't accept. And then someone else will try to match with you. <laughs> like a little dating game. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Uh huh. My internet um, jumped out for a second there, but Isabel, did you get a chance to ask Andy if it would be okay to share that list um, with um, on our website attributing it to her? Oh, absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you, Terry. Um, and I've, I've also used Empatico. And what's nice is um, if you're an immersion, a Spanish immersion teacher, they also have it in Spanish. You could connect with others in Spanish if, um, from different countries as well. And we've used it. We did with Mexico City and the kids loved it. So it's, it's a pretty awesome program. Um, we're going to go on to Don. So this, uh, this is pretty similar to Empatico. Um, it's ePals, except that you... Uh, you create your own profile 
and you put down what you want as far as a project and you put down your language. It's for ages three through 19. So that really opens it up for a lot of projects. Um, and you can, you can look through other teachers around the world and like look at what projects they wanna do and then you contact them. And uh, from there you set up the parameters of what you want your uh, students to do. So I put uh, my information on there and then a uh, teacher from India contacted me and uh, we, we set up the project and we exchanged all our files through uh, Google Drive. So we just shared a Google Drive, uh, Google folder, and uh, we dropped files in there, we dropped videos in there, and then it was very easy for um, us to show our students what uh, they were working on. So kind of like the other project, we started with uh, a cultural exchange. So the students in India showed us their lunchroom and the food they like to eat. And that got the kids really interested because they love food. And um, then I had my students play instruments um, and then the students in India played instruments and they made videos of it. And the students were really interested in what they were uh, playing instruments, uh, what types of instruments they had. And one of my students played uh, Wham, Careless Whisper on the saxophone, which I didn't know that was possible. And uh, that, was really, that was really great. And then from there, we went into uh, the main part of the project, which was pollution. And uh, I had my students break up into groups and they chose what they wanted to research in our area for pollution. So we went into the history of it. They researched uh, possible solutions and then they developed a, a project and you know they chose what type of project they wanted to do. Some people went did slideshows, some kids did um, videos and then we just shared it on the Google uh, folder. They watched it and looked over it in India and they did the same uh, for us. And um, it probably took, I think we probably spent about two or three months total on the project and um, you know, students really got a lot. They were able to compare similarities in pollution and problems that they had in India. Uh, same thing we had in uh, the Pacific Northwest. And uh, this served as a foundation for, um, Andy mentioned the National Geographic Educator Certification. So this project was the foundation for, um, for that, for my certification. And, um, the other thing I want to briefly mention, and this will lead into the next uh, presentation, is I did a, a project uh, with a class in Germany that uh, TOP set up. And uh, we, we talked about the 2020 presidential election with a class in Germany. And um, they only have that every four years, but you know, look, look for that in a couple of years. That was a great project too. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Website for ePals is really easy, and I'll put it in the chat. It's just ePals.com. Thank you, Don. That was awesome to hear how you teamed up with India, especially for pollution. I mean, it's a big thing right now, and trying to come up with solutions. Thank you for sharing. So now we're going to go on with Kira. Yes, and this slide, I was told I only had one slide, so that's why it seems a little hectic and crazy, but that kind of actually describes my life. So I teach German, but I also teach English language learners, and I really want to encourage you to investigate GAVE, stands for German American Virtual Exchange. Do not let the German part of it scare you, because actually I did many of these materials with my English language learners. They are all in English and I set them up to exchange with American students in my high school. So we had two exchanges going, one with a school in Germany and one with the English language learners in my high school and the American students in my high school to teach them a little bit about other cultures. So it is a virtual exchange between German and American high school students if you're looking for a high school activity. The exchanges can last four to six weeks. Ours that you'll see my partner, um, one of my partner schools there, we um, made it last actually pretty much the whole semester. So students complete getting to know you activities. And again, like Terry said, I used Empatico too. And Terry, you need to know you're my very first Skype ever. Please don't be afraid to Skype in the United States with your students. It is just as valuable of an experience. Um, 
So they completed getting to know you activities like Empatico, everything is done for you. And if you don't like one of their getting to know you activities, there are four other ones to choose from in each lesson. The lessons are arranged into units. One topic that we did was everyday life, but there's also one on sustainability. So within that, there's four getting to know you activities around the topic of sustainability. There are four getting to know you topics in the area of bullying, sports, and discrimination and stereotypes are all units that they have released already on the GAVE website. They also have exchange activities. You're expected to complete two of them, but there are four for you. So you can choose which two you want to do. And they are all in German, all in English, and are all free. The reflection I thought was the most interesting part for my students. They had never met a student from another country ever. Um, there is no German knowledge necessary and anywhere with internet access. I did link to an article I wrote about our exchange on this slide as well for the Ohio Foreign Language Association. Basically, we used Padlets because like Terry was saying, the time difference is always a challenge. We did have one live meeting, but most of our work was done on Padlets and all of the exchanges, sorry, the units end with a final product that they have to complete. And that is the we video you see down at the bottom. So two students, one from Germany, one from the United States collaborated to create a video of activities they could do offline. It was also interesting for my students to learn that Germans um, in this particular community that we were exchanging with were not allowed out of their house for two weeks. And we were back in school. We've been in school since August, full time, no hybrid, all students everywhere. So it was very eye opening for me and the students. And my contact information is at the top. I encourage you to go to the Goethe Institute. That's how you say that G-O-E word. Goethe is probably the most famous German poet. These are institutes all throughout the world just for the study of German. But again, all these materials are in English. So go to the Goethe Institute page and check it out. And these are all live links on my slide as well. So feel free to click away. Thank you so much. I'll have to definitely check that out. That's so cool, especially it could be used even though you don't teach German. Yes. <laughs> Here's some of the, we'll do that next. Okay, so now Sandra will be presenting with Rufo. Hello everybody. I'm so happy that you're joining us this evening. Uh, I am going to speak with my colleague, um, Sir Rufo, about a relationship that developed, I would say, organically. Many of us have traveled quite a bit. And one thing I'm encouraging everybody to do is to network. So back in 2015, I was selected to be a part of the um, Teachers for Global Classrooms. And that is a program through the United States State Department. And this took me to the Philippines where I was matched with Sir Rufo. And he acted as my mentor as he taught me about the Filipino education system. And from there, we fostered a professional relationship and decided that uh, what we started learning and doing together in 2015, we wanted to continue. And so I'm not, now going to pass it on to my colleague, Sir Rufo. Um, thank you, Sandy. Uh, I'd like to say you are very lucky to have Sandy Mikelski in our school. Um, I can just imagine that up to now we still have um, great connections. So um, it's, it has been six years now. Um, thank you again, Sandy. Um, I'd like to share with you that some of my colleagues in Jose Rizal University are with us today. Um, so I, um, after the program, when Sandy went back to the US, she had come up with the idea of a project called Cultural Mandalas, and I still have some here, um, I feel. Um, which she initially used in her classroom. So we had several exchanges over uh, chat and messenger about it, so and how to come up with it. Um, and then she finally sent it through snail mail. So it's like it took about two months before it reached the Philippines. So the mandalas are, are silk circles that have pie wages that describe the aspects of um, culture. So again, I'm, I'm showing it to you how uh, we did it. 
um, could be about food, religion, language, clothing, and the government. Uh, the pictures are are just amazing, and these are symbols also uh, to represent the students' um, attributes of their culture. And at the back of the mandala um, here, there's a poem that's entitled I Am. Uh, and since I teach seventh graders and I teach English, I also use that opportunity uh, to practice them in poetry writing. Um, but I also inform my students that their work, the mandalas, would be sent to the U.S. Uh, to be studied um, by the students of, um, of Sandy. So in my classes, my students enjoyed holding and seeing the drawings and reading the poems to American students. Uh, and perhaps just like the students of um, Sandy, um, questions about uh, the U.S. culture were also asked. And interestingly, they were able, they were able to see similarities and differences in, in our culture, such as preference for music, clothing, um, and the sports. So this has allowed my students to explore other cultures in the world, um, deepen their understanding of other people that regardless of diversity in race, um, distance and religion or culture, we still live under the same sun. Um, I believe that the project, as this one, the swapping uh, project, uh, will somehow make our students observe, reflect, and uh, think meaningfully. So um, I have been emphasizing also in my, in my students and in my co-teachers that global citizenship is a 21st century skill, and I am so delighted that this kind of interactions between Sandy and me uh, have been an initial step toward developing such competence. Um, I am also happy to, uh, to share that Sandy included me again in a recent international grant that uh, sought to help uh, students build their resilience and sustain a good mental health during this pandemic. Um, and I'm also pleased uh, that in this undertaking, a colleague of mine by the name of uh, Lorenza de Guzman, she is here in the Zoom room, helped me carry this out by asking her students to to draw out uh, artwork about resilience and write um, insightful essays. Um, and lastly, one remarkable point Sandy and I have been keeping is our connection. Uh, now it's even more possible because of the help of technology. She has also been generously, I'm very proud to say this one, sending out a number of boxes of books to the Philippines. And these have helped um, schools in the Philippines rebuild their library. So again, I am grateful that Sandy and I have been partners in helping Filipino and American students become global learners. Thank you. And I just want to say just quickly that uh, when the pandemic became more and more clear that this was going to be a global problem, we were just very lucky that the State Department offered up a grant opportunity. And, and it was through this collaboration um, that Sir Rufo and I, and along with two other Filipino educators, uh, designed and created this, uh, this project that enabled us to purchase uh, more than 800 uh, youth resilience related books and also teacher educator resources to help our students through this time um, and and the experiences are maybe, but all are impacting our children greatly. Um, and it's only through working together that we are able to help our students. So please build those relationships, continue networking. Um, and it can be something very simple as swapping through the mail or something more grand um, that's uh, grant funded. So we're happy that you're here this evening sharing ideas. Thank you. Thank you so much. You so much. Um, I think it's awesome that you kept the relationship after all those years. So it's, yeah, definitely do reach out when you do get, as um, Sandra said, just keeping that connection. Um, next up is Mary. She will be talking about how she does um, international global connections in her classroom. Thank you. Let me just share it. All right. Um, hi, I'm Mary. Um, 
I am going to share the global connections that I do as it's loading. Hold on. <laughs> Is it presenting? Okay. Um, so I'm going to begin over here. Um, I incorporate a lot of the United Nations um, sustainable uh, development goals into my classroom and being a Holocaust um, genocide um, educator, I, I want to bring in what the United Nations has has to uh, offer since they were created pretty much right after World War II. Um, so I focus a lot on goal 16 in my classroom. Um, and we recently just did a UN tour. We did a few of them this year. Um, we've had a virtual tour where they've taken us on the journey of all the 17 sustainable goals, um, but also showed us where these decisions are being made and how they're being done. Um, and I put in there the link itself where they have redesigned to adjust to the pandemic. Um, they have now Black History virtual tour. They have um, women's roles in society virtual tours. There's a whole list of, of themes that go around what the, what the UN is all about and, the, and, and, and pretty much the equity that, um, that they want to strive for. I also just recently through the DGC, which I put the email here to contact them, um, got in touch with someone who deals specifically with genocide. And they connected with my students to talk about how the United Nations tries uh, preventing genocide. And some of the challenges, um, one of the biggest challenges is not all the countries are signatory members in, in um, eradicating genocide. So this becomes kind of where my students were thinking fast forward, how can they make those countries become a member? Um, so the, the United Nations has a wealth of information as, as we know, but there's also opportunities for them to come mainstream into your classroom. Um, I also bring in a lot of international trip opportunities to my students. I organize um, many different places for my students to travel to. It's an opportunity to kind of connect with what I'm doing in the classroom. Um, but I've taken small groups, I've taken large groups, and we've traveled um, pretty much all over the world. But the most important thing is the academic element that is being fused into the trip. And I offer those during spring break and I offer those during summer. Um, my students at the end of the school year um, were realizing that we throw out way too much um, books, pretty much used nice, you know, not so much used books um, in the garbage at the end of the school year. There might be like half a notebook filled in and there's still pretty much um, half, half, a, half a book that, that can still be used. And um, we started partnering up with an organization called United Schools that was willing to take our materials that were gently used and would be shipping them over to Nicaragua. And I wound up visiting the school um, to see where our materials were going. And there were kids that were keeping our binders that our kids generally were throwing out um, right after the school year was over. These kids were holding on to them for three, four years straight, uh, just due to the fact that it's so hard to come by. So that reality of what we think is just a wasteable object at the end of the school year um, becomes a longevity somewhere else. Uh, we also bring in a lot of virtual exhibits uh, into, my, into my class. I just connected with Humans of the Holocaust, um, and they actually have a virtual exhibit museum that is pretty, you feel like you're in a museum, and it's very interactive. This is the link here, um, but essentially what my students have done is the curator and the photographer will actually connect 
and uh, my students always write thank thank you cards on uh, after the presentation, but they will connect with the students to talk about modern connections that are happening in terms of hate crimes, in terms of, of anti-Semitism, and how it connects historically. So there's a modern element and a historical element um, that goes in it. So he'll just, I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but it could kind of shows. 10 years, I'm a photographer and a, and a storyteller. I'm seeing behind the human facility later on about this project and I'm the grandson of Holocaust survivors and uh, both of my uh, grandparents were Holocaust survivors. So he brings in a lot of Israel, he brings in a lot of uh, history, but he also brings in the real narratives, the real stories. And then we spent time talking about justice and how it can be rectified and how it can be um, a stronger system. And then we always do um, a mystery connection. Facebook has a great page called Mystery Skype in the classroom. And I've seen people talk about ePals and, um, and, but this is a forum essentially where you can kind of customize and make a post specifically of what you want. Um, so if you're looking for a, a class to connect in Germany, you can, you can pretty much just put that on there and you'll be amazed at how many teachers will respond back from all over from all over the world. And I do it based on themes. So we had a game, a theme game where we connected with students in Israel, but we actually played with them. Um, not only do we learn about the country and the culture, but at the end, my students were actually teaching them a games in the United States. And then we were they were teaching us games that were created in Israel. And we actually played a digital one together, real time. And then we did a theme of culture. We just recently connected with kids in, um, in Turkey on the theme of music. We connected in Zambia, we connected in India, we talked about plastic. Um, so every, pretty much twice a month, I have um, cross connections with um, uh, teachers from other countries and the kids do all the presentations. I don't, I don't, I don't do anything. The kids, the kids go up there, the kids present their screens, the kids talk about it and, um, and the kids literally take the leadership role and the kids on the other side are doing the same. They're presenting, they're talking, they're asking questions to each other. So the teachers are kind of hands off and just assisting with, with the actual um, technology. All right, I'm going to uh, stop sharing. And Jennifer, I'm going to give it back to you. There you go. All right. Okay, so you guys, this has been absolutely amazing. If you're like me, like even though I've been working with these presenters for weeks, I still have like sticky notes <laughs> with all these notes that I've written down. This has been so amazing. So because it's been so amazing, um, we're not going to have time for our breakout rooms, but we still want you all to connect with members of your grade level. So if you're in elementary school, we still want you to be able to connect with elementary school educators and middle school educators and high school educators here. And because of this, we're going to go ahead and share our breakout slides with you all. And what we're asking you to do on these slides, if you would like, is to go ahead and put your contact information on these slides. Um, share out with the group some of the things that you've done in your own class as far as connecting your classroom globally, or share out some tools that you would like to learn more about. This is all about connections. So right now, um, Jennifer is putting in some links to the slides for you all. And if you're in elementary school, you can click on the elementary school link. And if you're in middle school, click on the middle school link and just add to those slides. And here's an example of, um, from our last webinar, someone who was in the middle school group, this is what his slide ended up looking like. So he put his name on there and he put his um, email on there and he put some ideas or some tools that he wanted to share out with the group. All right, so I know we can't all be in the small groups right now just because of time, but that doesn't mean we can't share our voice. 
and open up these slides and share with other people across our grade level. I think it would be an amazing opportunity. And um, Isabel, who is an amazing NEA representative, I know she would be so excited to share these slides with everyone if we fill them out. So that would be awesome if you all did that. And um, Jennifer, I think, the, I think the links are all in there now. So you all can click on the links and go ahead and start working on those slides. And we also have a survey to fill out. Jennifer, do you wanna jump in? Sure, at the end of the links that I sent, there's also the survey as well. And I'll resend the, the webinar survey too. But um, as you can see, there's a heading for each link and then the webinar survey adding there as well. Cool. Well, um, we really appreciate you being a part of our webinar. And there's gonna be another one coming up, global um, webinar number three, teaching with the sustainable development goals. It will take place in late May and it'll be that's the same format as well. Um, as mentioned, uh, please complete the short evaluation um, if you can before you leave. If not, um, we'll be sending that out as well um, with the other with the links to the each um, grade level to add into your slide. So thank you so much for coming. And if you have any questions, feel free to stick around. But um, this concludes our webinar too. Um, thanks for being uh, taking your time to be a part of this. We really appreciate it. On behalf of the foundation, thanks so much, Jennifer, Makisha, and all the terrific presenters. Um, we have really enjoyed this rich conversation and look forward to sharing these resources widely. Thanks again. Thank you, everyone.